about the year 2000. We survived the Y2K bug, Big Brother hit our screens for the first time, and we built a giant upside down dome in the middle of South East London for reasons. So put down your GameCube, call someone on your 3310 and break out your Razor scooter. I'm Carl from Quad, and this is 10 films that turned 20 in 2020. Number one, Gladiator. Winning five Oscars and launching the career of current awards magnet Joaquin Phoenix, Ridley Scott sword, sandals and slaughter epic brought the historical saga back into the 21st century. Sadly, we never got to see the proposed sequel where Maximus fights deities in the afterlife, which was written by Nick Cave. This film also marked the final appearance of notable Hellraiser Oliver Reed. If you don't know who that is, ask your mum. Number two, Memento. If you'd have told me that a film that played backwards starring Mike from Neighbours was going to be one of the biggest hits of the year, then we would have laughed in your face. But Christopher Nolan proved it can be done. This of course led to studios making the decision that this would be the creative force to erase bat nipples from the Batman franchise. Also on the Memento DVD, if you select the right buttons, the film will play forwards, but we're not going to tell you how to do that. Number 3. American Psycho. Considered by many to be an unfilmable book, Brett Easton Ellis' seminal work went through development hell for eight years. In what could be considered a star-making turn, Christian Bale fought for the studio, appointed directors wanting other actors, and even go to the point of phoning those actors to ask them to not take the part. Fun fact, one of those actors was Leonardo DiCaprio, who turned down the role in the end in order to take the lead in. Number four, The Beach. Take Danny Boyle out of Scotland and stick him on an island in Bangkok and what do you get? You get a film that's... alright? Well, it's split audiences, let's put it that way. The film caused controversy in Thailand due to its depiction of the drug culture, and the beach itself used in the film was damaged by tourist traffic and won't be open again till 2021. Still, that All Saints tomb was a banger, right? Number five, Requiem for a Dream. Poor, poor Jared Leto. After getting his face pulverized by Edward Norton in Fight Club and getting an axe between the eyes in American Psycho, Leto finally got round to telling his agents, not the face. Undeterred, Darren Aronofsky instead put him through nearly two hours of emotional trauma and then chopped off his arm. It'll come as no surprise to you he shifted focus to 30 seconds to Mars shortly after this film. Number 6. High Fidelity Adapted from Nick Hornby's novel, High Fidelity is the story of record shop owner Rob Gordon having a mid-30s crisis and expressing that by compiling top 5 lists. Why anyone would want to watch somebody talk about a big load of lists, we don't really understand. However, if this is up your street, it has just been rebooted as a television series starring Zoe Kravitz in the John Cusack role. Number 7. Unbreakable after blowing audiences' minds with a twist in the sixth sense, surely M. Night Shyamalan was not going to do it again. Fool me once, Nighty, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me three or four times over the next 20 years, well, we should all be ashamed of ourselves. The biggest and most convenient twist yet, when he decided that the 2000 standalone film Unbreakable was actually the first of a trilogy that he would return to with 2016's Split and 2019's Glass, creating the M. Night Shyamalan verse. Is this the longest reveal for a cinematic universe we've ever had? And where does 2002's Stuart Little fit into it all? We can't wait to find out. Number 8. X-Men. Before the MCU was a thing, there was the X-Men. Well, to be fair, there was Blade before that. How the Duck was in 1986, and there was that time that David Hasselhoff played Nick Fury. Anyway, Take the director of The Usual Suspects, throw in Jean-Luc Picard, Gandalf the Grey, and a man then best known as playing Gaston in the musical for Beauty and the Beast, and you get the first big attempt to aim superhero movies at the mainstream audience. With three main films, four prequels, and five spin-offs over the past two decades, X-Men is the EastEnders of the superhero genre. Don't worry if you've missed out, however, as the franchises do a reboot in the next couple of years. Number 9. Little Nicky. Adam Sandler has got a Jekyll and Hyde career. 
For every punch drunk love, there's grown ups too. For every funny people, there's a don't mess with the Zohan. And for every uncut gems, there's a Jack and Jill. For us, Little Nicky is where it starts. A financial failure at the box office despite a packed cast, Sandler moved on to more dramatic fare with the P.T. Anderson directed Punch Drunk Love. Since then he's flipped from dramatic to comedic, most recently with a much lauded Uncut Gems. And number 10, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. If there's one thing you can say about Ang Lee is he's never predictable when it comes to taking work. Coming off American Civil War drama Ride with the Devil and his adaptation of Sense and Sensibility, Lee's epic tale of romance and wire work opened the doors for a style previously rarely seen in Western cinema. From here, the Eastern influence would become more proliferant, while Lee himself went on to direct Brokeback Mountain and Life of Pi, winning Best Director for both, as well as bringing the Hulk to the big screen. Not Mark Ruffalo, the other one. No, the other, other one. While we've covered 10 films here, there were many others that year that this year become 20 years old. Here's just a few others that we want to mention. The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle, Almost Famous, Battle Royale, Big Mama's House, Billy Elliot, Bring It On, Cast Away, Chicken Run, Coyote Ugly, Dancer in the Dark, Dude, Where's My Car, Aaron Brockovich, Meet the Parents, Me, Myself and Irene, Nutty Professor 2, The Clumps, Oh Brother Where Art Thou, Road Trip, Scary Movie, Sexy Beast, and What Lies Beneath. That's our list. If there's any other films you think we should have mentioned, then leave a comment in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I'm Carl from Quad, and I'll see you next time.